when you see a fistula, don't wait. Don't wait. Let the patient know about the extraction and let them know that they need to move forward because once you have a fistula, you know that there's a compromise to the buccal plate. Okay? And if you look at the radiograph, I think everybody can see what is the reason for the infection or the crack. Can everybody see that? Okay. So this tooth had uh, obviously a, uh, a big crack, a big uh, perforation. And as you reflect the tissue, you can see the extent of the loss of the buccal plate. Okay. You can see quite a bit of bone loss. You can see uh, that uh, we have the interproximal bone and tissue, but the buccal plate is very compromised. So don't get overwhelmed of how it looks. Make Be very, very clear. Be very methodical in your thinking. Don't get overwhelmed, okay? All, all it means is that you need to reflect the flap beyond the defect. You need to debride it, suspend so good, you know, five, sometimes 10 minutes to debride the socket, remove all the granulation tissue, be in contact with the uh, actual healthy bone if the bone is not very vascular. And that happens every once in a while. You may need to create some bleeding points, some vascular channels to improve the vascularity. And then think about how many walls start counting. Okay, so it's a little bit different than the previous case. If you count the walls, you can probably tell that there is about four and a half walls. We have mesiodistal lingual, I'm sorry, mesiodistal palatal, and half of the buccal plate. And we uh, probably have, uh, may have a little uh, bottom or, or floor. So what does the compartment technique tell us to do, if you agree? Graft with moderate force, use a membrane, graft in excess if you can, use a membrane on the buccal, and in this case, I advanced primarily, and I wanted to, the reason I'm showing this to you, and I, we don't do this anymore, I wanted to show you that your bone grafts will heal. But I wanted to also demonstrate what is it going to do to the mucogingival junction. Look at the, le the left picture. You see that the mucogingival junction has been displaced, the bone vascularity, the soft tissue vascularity has been compromised. You can create some... Uh, uncomfortable scar tissue, you can then reposition it at the time of implant placement, but don't aim for primary closure, okay? That's really, um, you know, one of my tips of this training. Keep it open. Don't forget that extraction sockets naturally, without any grafting, heal quite well, being left open. And the body has a mechanism of creating good attaching keratinized tissue to create not just good bone, but also soft tissue that is advantageous for the next step. So, Joshua is asking about what is my basic extraction technique. That really depends on the residual tooth structure. If you have a, a um, an intact tooth that just has a cracked a crack and has no restoration, I will very commonly use universal forceps that are meant for central incisors and start with rotational movements and for about 30 something seconds just create rotational movements without attempting to extract and then i would wait a few more a few minutes sometimes up to five and ten if there's no movement and repeat the process until we get some mobility and then start the extraction that's what i call protocol a but the reality is that with most central incisors that fail most of them are endodontically treated. Most of them are damaged and destroyed and have restorations, mostly crowns and sometimes post spaces. It's not always doable. In the later part of this morning, I'm going to talk about uh, a few tricks for that. But uh, there are a couple of protocols that I would use, starting with the universal forceps, uh, all the way to uh, you know, removing selectively removing bone in strategic, strategic places and elevating the roots. And of course, uh, using the Benex extractor uh, for for those broken down roots. Okay. So once this site is healed, you can see that although this was a tremendous defect, 
it healed extremely well and we're getting um, a good implant positioning. But because I advanced the tissue, the tissue is somewhat compromised. And I want you to learn from my mistake in this case, not to advance the flap, keep it open, keep the natural soft tissue architecture so you can have great results.